Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, today we're talking about the best ways to get money out of your TSP in retirement because we all know it's easy to put money in. It comes straight, straight from your paychecks, simple, easy to do. You've been doing it for decades probably at this point, but what are the best ways and things to watch out for when pulling money out in retirement because that's a completely different beast and that's what we're going to dive into and talk about today and if you're new to the channel welcome so good to have you my name is Dallin Haas a financial planner who helps federal employees retire and get the most of their benefits every single day and I absolutely love it so let's dive in there are a couple things to consider when pulling money out first is we want to make sure we avoid all penalties that could happen second what are the options how can we take money out of the TSP what are the different options on doing that and what are the best ones we're going to dive into all of these things starting with penalties. The biggest and most important penalty to consider is what they call the early withdrawal penalty. It's 10%, okay? Long story short, your TSP is what they call a retirement account, right? It's meant for retirement. And if you don't follow the government's rules, they say, hey, you didn't follow the rules. We're gonna, we're gonna charge you an extra 10% on whatever withdrawal you have if you, quote unquote, take it out early, okay? So what does early mean? How do we avoid this 10% penalty? Well, the classic, the default age that you have to wait to before you can take money out of the TSP is 59 and a half. 59 and a half. And that age applies to all retirement accounts, IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, all of them, okay? including the TSP, right? However, well, let me actually back up. Before I, however you, okay, let me back up one step. So the TSP, generally speaking, in the default mode, without any exceptions, you'd have to wait till 59 and a half to pull money out and avoid this 10% penalty, okay? Now, will you have to pay taxes on the money? Yes, if you are taking from the traditional TSP. This penalty is separate from taxes. So you pay taxes, and this penalty, okay? Now, however, okay, here comes the however. However, the TSP has a special exception to this 59 and a half rule, okay? And the exception is what they call the rule of 55, okay? The rule of 55. This is how the rule works. The rule says, hey, if you leave the government in the year you turn 55 or later, you can access your TSP without this penalty. They'll waive the penalty, okay? So for example, let's say you have 30 years of, of service, you retire at 57, your MRA, and you leave. Can you get into your TSP without penalty, right? You're before 59 and a half, but under the rule of 55, you, they waive that 10% penalty, you are good to go. However, this rule of 55 is an all or nothing rule, meaning if you leave the government in the year you turn 54, a year early, right? A year before this, this cutoff, how long do you have to wait until you're able to access TSP without this penalty, right? Do you just have to wait one year until age 55, then you're good to go? No. If you leave the government before the year you turn 55, you're going to have to wait all the way to 59 and a half. Okay, this age 55 rule only applies to those that leave the government in the year that they turn 55 or later, okay? Now, there's one more exception, right? One more exception, and it's for special provision federal employees. So air traffic controllers, law enforcement, you know who you are. Instead of age 55, you actually have age 50, okay? You can access your TSP as early as age 50, right? Without a penalty. And for special provisions, right? Air traffic controllers, law enforcement, firefighters, as long as you're eligible to retire under your retirement rules, you actually can get into your TSP right away as well without the 10% penalty. So let's do a recap. 59 and a half is the default, but there's a number of exceptions. If you're a traditional first employee, age 55 is the exception. If you are special provisions, it's going to be either age 50 right? Or as soon as you're eligible to retire, right? 
um, assuming you're eligible for the full-blown special provision retirement, a full normal retirement, okay? So that's the first thing to know is can you avoid the penalty? That's huge. You do not want to pay an additional 10% on any withdrawals, okay? Next, withdrawal options, okay? So now that we're avoiding the penalty, what are the options? What does the TSP allow me to do to take money out, right? How does this work in practice? Well, there are three main options, okay? Option number one is what they call uh, annuity, okay? Option two, option two is what they call basically just a recurring withdrawal, okay? Um, or installment payments is the official term they use, installment, okay? Or you can do one-time withdrawals, okay? So you again, TSP annuity, installment payments, or one-time withdrawals, okay? Let's talk about them. Now, I've actually got whole videos on TSP annuities, so go check those out if you want a full, in-depth view on it. But this is the summary. What a TSP annuity is, now, that let's, let's just define some terms here. When I say TSP annuity, this is 100% different from, separate from, your FERS pension or your FERS annuity. Two different things, okay? Two different things. Your TSP annuity, this is what it is. It's you taking a piece of your TSP, or all of it, and turning it over to a insurance company, okay? The company that right now that has the contract to provide annuities in the TSP is MetLife, okay? So if you do an annuity through the TSP, you're using MetLife. They are the insurance company that's gonna provide that for you. Long story short, you give them a lump sum and they turn that into an income, income source for you, okay? For example, you give them $200,000 and they guarantee $1,000 a month for the rest of your life, right? You give them a lump sum and they guarantee a monthly or quarterly or whatever you set up, right? They guarantee a recurring revenue stream for you, okay? That is what that is. Now, here's the summary of that. Most federal employees do not need another annuity, right? You, often, you already have your first pension. You're going to have Social Security. You, you may have the first supplement. You may have some military income, right? Most federal employees do not want to do the annuity. Check out my other video if you want the full in-depth thing. But that's a summarized version, okay? Probably don't do this. Most people regret this, that do this. Most people that, that do it, they regret it. What are the other options, though? If we don't want to do option number one, what about the other options? Installment payments. Installment payments are very flexible. Basically, you tell the TSP how much you want and how often you want, and they'll send it to you, okay? You can tell the TSP, I want $200 a month or, or $5,000 a month, and they'll send it to you. Now, the one difference between installment payments and annuity is with an annuity, the insurance company guarantees to pay out a certain amount for a certain amount of time right? With an installment payment, it's on you. The responsibility lies on you to not pull out too much, right? If you say, hey, I want a hundred grand, a hundred thousand dollars per month, um, start sending it, they'll do it, but your money probably won't last very long, right? And that's, that's on you. That's on you. And the installment payments are very flexible. You can start them, stop them at any time. You can do monthly, quarterly, annually. There's a bunch of options, okay? It's very, very flexible. Last but not least is one-time withdrawals. If you need a one-time thing, hey, you're trying to do some work on your house, your, your car blew up, you need to buy a new car, and you need just one-time withdrawals, you can do that too, okay? There, these two options are very flexible down here. Very flexible, okay? I wouldn't be too worried about it. As long as you don't do the annuity, you've got lots of flexibility, okay? The annuity really locks you in and there's not a lot of changes you can make after the fact, okay? So let's do a quick summary. Number one, avoid the 10% penalty. Make sure you hit one of these rules so you're good to go. Second, here are the options on taking money out. Annuity, installment payments, or one time, right? Again, probably stay away from the annuity. Most of the time, it doesn't make sense. The installment payments and one-time withdrawals, they're flexible. You can start to stop them at any time. They're flexible. But they are, it's your responsibility to make sure you don't take out too much, okay? Which, again, I've got whole videos on how much you should be taking out, how much your TSP can provide for you, those sort of things. 
Okay, but I hope that's helpful. Hopefully that gives you some ideas and things to think about so that you can get the most out of your TSP in retirement. And if you want help in your own situation, check out the description. There's a bunch of resources that we give out for free, right? As well as information about working with our firm. And I hope again, this is helpful. That's my goal here. And I'll see you guys next time.